Okay, let's cover the basics of an HVLP gun. Let's say you just got home from the store, you open the box, and you're looking at a couple of parts, something like this. So this is one of my older guns. We're just using it as an example. What you're going to want to do, though, is take this little filter. It's got a little tab on it for grabbing onto. That goes into here. This is your paint supply. Your cup is going to screw onto that. And you might have a regulator like this. Now, I have a dedicated air system for spraying that has been regulated down. It runs at about 40 PSI. A lot of these HVLP guns will specify the max pressure that you can have to the back of the gun. That's what this is for. If your typical air compressor is set to, let's say, 120, 125 PSI, this is going to take 125 PSI on the supply end and reduce it down to 40 PSI by adjusting this. I don't use those. I like to keep my gun a little bit more compact and light, so I have the entire system regulated down to 40 PSI. Okay, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So your regulator will be screwed on here. You're going to need a quick connect that's compatible with your air system. The first knob that you're going to see is this little one down here. That's for fine-tuning your airflow. Screwed all the way in, there will be no airflow through this gun. Adjustment and setting of this valve here is going to have a big impact on the way that your pattern looks on this end. You'll want to start with that completely closed. Okay, moving up the body of the gun, you've got your fan control here. This is what's going to make your fan get bigger and smaller out here. You're going to want to start with that one and a half turns open. And then directly behind that, we've got our fluid feed here. You're going to want to close that all the way and start with that one and a half turns open. What this is doing is controlling how far you can pull the trigger in and how much fluid you can release from your cup out into your nozzle. Now speaking of the nozzle, there's different tips that you're going to want to use for different types of paint. This is a good general purpose tip at 1.4. These tips you can spray with them horizontal, which is going to give you a vertical fan, or you can rotate them 90 degrees, and that's going to give you a horizontal fan, depending on how you're most comfortable spraying and how you can best utilize your material. Now moving up the cup of the gun, you've got your lid here. You can see your filter in there. But on top of this lid, very important, is a small hole and that's going to allow air to replace the material as the material is used so that you do not create a vacuum. You need to ensure that you clean that and keep that clean also otherwise it's going to have an adverse effect on the spray pattern. Okay you've got your HVLP gun it's all assembled now. Before we spray material let's put a little bit of acetone in here and we'll try to spray this. What this is going to do is clean out any of the shipping oil and it's going to make sure that all of our parts are in working order. Okay, let's cover our gun adjustments. Now we've got fluid in the cup and we've got our air valve all the way closed down. Our fan is set to zero and our fluid is set to zero. Let's open this one and a half turns. One and a half. That's always a good point of reference. One and a half turns. Now this air valve on the bottom that we talked about is really going to have an effect on the atomization of the paint. You do not want your paint to be drying in the air before it hits your substrate. You also don't want it to be under atomized to where it's not laying out very nice. So let's open that up about midway. Okay, our fan control all the way down is going to give us a nice circle. That's good for doing detail work, but it's not going to be very nice for doing a large substrate. So we're going to open that up slightly. Good point of reference, I mentioned this in my last video, a pinky to thumb width away from your substrate, you want to be about a pinky to thumb width tall. Now acetone is a little bit harder to see than regular paint will be. It's also a lot thinner than regular paint will be. But we can roughly see that spray pattern there. And so we're set right in the neighborhood of where we want to be. Now again, this is set halfway open. 
our fluid valve is set one and a half turns open, and our air control is set about halfway open. That's a good starting point for actual paint. Off the shelf reducer, hardener, Japan dryer. Now you absolutely want to filter this before you pour it into your gun. Okay, we're back here at our piece of cardboard. We have our gun set to where we left it with the acetone. Let's double check it. That's actually not looking too bad. You can see that's a nice consistent pattern. We're keeping our spray gun exactly parallel to our piece. You don't want to tip it either direction. You want to keep it nice and flat. So now we've got it tuned and ready to spray gun.